My name is Steve and welcome back to my shop and this is Shark Bits episode number 27 and in this episode I've got a few new tool purchases I've got some material that I just got in and I'm going to be introducing and sharing as the feature for this uh, viewer project that I'm going to be starting to work on so let's get started first thing I want to share with you is this microscope. It's a stereo microscope, got two eyepieces. It is a 5X and a 10X power, made in Japan. I picked it up used. It had been listed. They dropped the price on it, did a make an offer, and I made an offer that they accepted. I'm thrilled with it so far. My primary reason for wanting it was so that I could check cutting tools. The wear on cutting tools, carbide inserts and so on to check for damage on carbide inserts. And I've already used it. I had a, a diamond that's used in a hardness tester and I wasn't sure whether it was any good or not. It came in a lot of stuff that I had picked up and I was able to determine that in fact it was either brand new or had never been used because it was absolutely perfect. Up to this point, I've been carrying that around for several years and I was never able to determine whether it was any good or not. By determining it was good, it found a new home. I offered it to another YouTuber who had just gotten a hardness tester that was missing the diamond and hopefully it'll work out for him. So this is my new, to me, Parco Scientific Microscope. I picked up a couple of new tools. I've been adding to my 5C collets and expanding into the metric collets. And so I just got a 8 millimeter 5C collet. So now I have 6, 8, 10, and 12. I'm on my way to uh, a metric collet set. <clears throat> the next thing that I picked up was a tool holder that takes the CNMG type inserts. And I had been wanting one for a while. And I'll take the, bring the camera in a little bit closer and show you that. I have light duty tool holders for uh, the carbide tips and they were fine on my six inch atlas lathe but now that I've got the 10 inch lathe I can do a little bit heavier cuts I wanted a little bit heavier duty cutter so I picked this up this again was a Shars and I also picked up a few extra inserts for it the other thing that I picked up, which is of no particular consequence, is an extra tool holder that will fit a, uh, a boring bar. I have quite a few of the standard holders, but this one has the V-groove in the bottom of it to take the round boring bar. I have one, but I... I like to keep a couple of boring bars set up so that I don't have to keep changing it over each time I need to use a different size boring bar. The next tool that I picked up, and I think that this is only the second Starrett tool that I have ever purchased new. I've got quite a Starrett collection of precision instruments, but this is an edge finder and I have several different edge finders but I don't have any with the small 200 thousandths pilot on them so this was on sale and I decided to pick it up now that I've got the DRO on the uh, mill the edge finder has become a much more valuable tool and I think that's it for the new tools now let's look at some material for some new projects. One of the last jobs that I did on the mill, I could have used a 
set of low profile hold down clamps. And there's a, a book, a machine shop project book by Harold Hall. There's a plan for them. Matter of fact, Emma from Emma's Spare Room Workshop has a video on building them. And I got a piece of 4140 steel to make those clamps out of. So that's going to be one of my next projects. That'll be coming up pretty soon. The other project that I've got in mind, another tool making project, is to build a ball turner. I've got a, another project that I want to do that I need to turn a, a ball for a handle. And I decided that I'd like to get a ball turner. So I got a piece of material. I've got a plan in mind. Let's see if I can get it out of here. And this is a piece of D2 tool steel that I'm going to cut it out of and it measures three and a half inches in diameter and about two and a quarter inches long and that has a ball turner hiding inside it somewhere so that'll be another up-and-coming project that we'll be seeing soon here is a book that I was referring to as the Model Engineers Workshop Projects by Harold Hall. It's in the Workshop Practice Series and it is number 39. And the project that I am interested in are these low profile clamps. And I am going to be making this style here the T-slot clamp and so I'll be making that to fit my uh, the T-slots on my mill so that's an up-and-coming project I had one of my viewers email a request to me and he asked me if I was interested in making a part uh, he sent me a drawing of it which I'll share with you in a minute and what it is it's called a worm and it's made out of either bronze or brass and it's a four tooth per inch Acme thread one inch in diameter which is not a standard size normally one inch would be five TPI uh, I've got a piece of brass in stock that'll work out just fine other challenge for me was that I had to grind a custom tool bit. I looked into purchasing a, a carbide insert for number four Acme and it was worth more than the job. So uh, I decided since it's brass anyway I just custom grind a high speed steel tool bit and that is the feature of this video. I used my new Shars tool grinding fixture and set it up on the surface grinder and ground the tool bit. So I'll be sharing that with you. So let me bring you in and I'll show you the part that I'll be making. Here's a close up shot of the drawing that I have. And as I mentioned, it's one inch in diameter, it's going to be an inch and three quarters long. It has a half inch bore reamed through and Acme four thread per inch worm on it. Now the, uh, the Atlas lathe actually will go down to four threads per inch so I'm able to do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it on my old lathe because it wouldn't go down to four. The considerations for cutting the tool is that this angle here I've got to make side relief on the cutter in order to clear that and that angle is approximately 12 degrees so 
I ground the tool bit with 14 degrees of side clearance so that'll give me a little bit of leeway on that and I'll show you the uh, the details of that in uh, the rest of this video the other feature on it is that there is an eighth inch keyway and I do not have an eighth inch keyway brooch but the uh, the viewer said he has the brooch set so he'll take care of broaching the keyway. Got my tool cutter attachment mounted on the surface grinder. And I think I've got my angle set. So I'm going to crank it up and see what it does. And down to my scribe line. So I'm going to turn the bit over, do the other side. Okay, this is my final cut. That's it. Now take it off, check the angle, and then cut the nose. Okay, I've got my thread gauge here, and the angle worked out perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now what I have to do is grind the nose back 
to match the width for the four threads per inch. I'm going to go do that on the uh, bench grinder. Okay, there's the number four. And it matches it perfectly. So I'm going to just touch it up with the bench stone. And we're ready to cut threads. So that will wrap up this episode of Shark Bits. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be shooting a video very shortly on machining the worm out of this piece of brass. So come back and visit. See you in the next video.